everybody, Mr. Second Password here. Today we're going to review, I'm going to give my response uh, to an interesting video I just saw from a fellow Clevelander who now lives abroad as well. Uh, this, this gentleman here, the, the leader of this channel, Nomad Capitalist. Uh, here's the link to his website and his, his YouTube channel here. Very popular international channel. He co covers a whole bunch of countries uh, on the best places to live uh, for, specifically for the seven and eight figure people who are looking for their best options when moving abroad. So again, maybe someone pressured him to do a video like this, right? Uh, for the rest of us, you could say, on places he would go in Latin America uh, if he had a budget of $1,000 max that he could spend a month or less. And I'm going to give my replies based on my own personal experience from someone who has lived on 1000 a month for extended periods of time in Latin America. And I, I disagree with him with a lot of his points and places that he mentions in this video. Um, but generally, he does have a ton of great content on his channel, and I highly recommend uh, you check out his channel, uh, Nomad Capitalist, right? So let's get right to it. Month. We start in the southern tip of Latin America in Chile. Chile, definitely not a cheap place to live. Someone did suggest Santiago. I find it hard to believe you're going to live. I also find it hard to believe. That's the dumbest thing I've heard in a long time if you're on a budget moving to Chile. Chile is not cheap. It's cheaper than North America, sure, but come on, man. No way. Well at all in Santiago for $1,000 a month, or perhaps anywhere in Chile, but the suggestions are, uh, one gentleman says, I live for a little bit under $1,000 a month in Valparaiso. The weather's like Southern California. The internet's good for working online. Cost of living is good. I live a five-minute walk from the beach, and I don't need a car because the public transportation is good. So Valparaiso, perhaps worth considering. It I met someone from Valparaiso recently. No, it's, it's, I mean, there's much cheaper, nicer places in Latin America than, than, Valparaiso, than Chile in general uh, if you're on a budget. Right, so let's continue. Now, the, uh, the key word today is comfortability, comfort right comfortably being able to live for a thousand a month or less right and not feeling like you have to skimp being able to go out and still have a social life and live in a decent place that's safe right and and, and re reasonably nice right so you know not lowering your lifestyle too much to get under that thousand dollars right so that's kind of what where i'm going right now you could live pretty much anywhere for a thousand i i could live in cleveland ohio for a thousand a month but I'd probably have to live off my own body fat and I wouldn't be able to go out at all and maybe eat once a day and uh, yeah, I mean you could do it, but is it comfortable? You know, and you, sure, you could live pretty much in any of these countries if you go off to the mountains somewhere and cook for yourself every day, uh, but most of us probably don't want to do that. So, you know, let's continue keeping that in mind. Thousand dollars a month. I'd like to know how. Uh, leave a comment below with that. Let's talk about Colombia. I have been a fan of Bogota. I think it's uh, you know, it could be a bit of a stretch for a thousand bucks. Someone suggested Medellin. Uh, they said, "Hey, let me let me push the a thousand bucks up to fourteen, fifteen hundred bucks." Uh, another guy chimed in and said, "Medellin." No, are you crazy? Uh, come on, man. Um, these big cities in Colombia. Uh, it would not be very comfortable to do for under a thousand a month. Uh, you can, but um, is it going to be safe where you're living? Uh, is it going to be acceptable? Uh, again, you know, Colombia is not expensive, but it's also not cheap compared to a few of the places that I'm going to mention uh, in a little bit later in this video as far as the top choices if you're on a really tight budget. Colombia does not make the cut for me. Because I've lived there for as little as 600 bucks a month. Great food, springtime weather year round. They do call it the eternal spring. And the hottest girls I've seen in my entire life, says Jason. That's true, but it's not, it's not uh, that cheap. 
trust me, Colombia. It's, it used to be maybe 10, 20 years ago, but now... Mm. So, uh, to me, it seems like 600 bucks seems a little aggressive for Medellin. Certainly other more up-and-coming cities in Colombia, Bucaramanga, just fun to say. Come on, man. Bucaramanga, I've been there. Saw a cockfight there. Uh, there's not, there's nothing there, man. It's a small town, and you're right on the edge of Venezuela, which you can't, cannot go to right now, right? Uh, so, uh, perched on a plateau, the Ant Mountains in the northeast region of Colombia, about seventy miles from the border with Venezuela. Gives a history lesson and says how you can live there for less than a thousand bucks a month. And I, someone else chimes in with Cali, the eternal summer city in southwestern Colombia, capital of the Valle de, uh, de Cuaca department. Warm weather, low cost of living, bustling nightlife. It is a, a pretty fiery place. You've got salsa music. Uh, you've got a lot going on down. Well, you do have salsa music, but uh, it's not Cali. It's Cali, bro. How long have you lived in Colombia? And... Um, I mean, I mean, this, this gentleman does say that he, he spent, he has a home and spends quite a bit of time in Bogota. Now, uh, Cali, come on, man. Cali, uh, is hot. It's humid. It's flat. There's no beach. I don't think most of us North Americans would like it very much. And it's not particularly cheap. I mean, it's cheaper than North America, but it's not that, that cheap, right? If we're talking about pure budget living here, but comfortable budget living. Again, I think costs are going up. People say it's a lot cheap on the cheap. Next up, let's talk about Argentina. One gentleman suggests in Cordoba, he can live for as little as $250 a month, thanks to the local currency devaluing a lot. Certainly, they like their currency devaluations down there in Argentina. It is a uh, financially chaotic place. As far as the country in general, someone says, it is peppered with small towns that have vibrant communities, diverse outdoor activities. You can live in a large property with no neighbors but horses for miles or in a small house within a town that provides many of the amenities of city life but is nestled among the mountains or choose your own balance of the two. Someone else suggests Salta in the northwest of Argentina, becoming a must-see area with incredible landscapes, strong, strong cultural uh, traditions, and the beautiful wine of the region. So I think definitely with the currency devaluation, there are a lot of places that are smaller places that you could live in Argentina. Uh, Buenos Aires, we had discussed in our original video, and it was thought that that would definitely be a difficult place to do it. No way, man. Uh, definitely not Buenos Aires. And in small towns in Argentina, mm, uh, it's not the best that Latin America has to offer. Let's put it that way. It's Yes, there's been hyperinflation that's helped dollar carriers out, but um, no, it's, it's still not that cheap and people are struggling. Uh, just like in Colombia, uh, people are struggling, local people, and it's just not, uh, say, top three, what we're going to cover at the end of this video, uh, for places to live comfortably on a budget in Latin America. Um, it doesn't make the list. It's just not not there. It's, it's cheaper, but it's not cheap, Argentina, let me tell you. Uh, but other the, uh, cities, smaller towns in Argentina, definitely more doable. Uh, let's talk about Nick. Smaller towns anywhere are going to be cheaper than the larger cities. But, you know, that, that doesn't really help us uh, when we're trying to choose somewhere when we're on a budget. Agua, a place where I think probably most places you could live for $1,000 a month. Managua? Come on, man. Uh, Managua... I know people from Managua that don't even want to go to Managua. Uh, you know what I mean? These capital cities in Central America, most of them, you want to be a little careful, and most of us would not really want to live there. And probably we'd want to cut our visits short as well, right? So something to think about too. Is it cheap? Not as cheap as you'd think, right? Gas prices are higher. Um, just like North America, and there's a lot of things, and people are struggling, you know, again. So 
which kind of leads to the insecurity. So, I mean, I don't know. Managua? Come on, man. It's not tops in my list. I don't know why you would necessarily want to live in Managua. But there you go. Granada, uh, Leon up in the north, Chinandega, uh, San Juan del Sur, perhaps. Maybe it's getting a little bit tougher down in the south on the coast where it's a little bit cooler. Uh, and so... I think Nicaragua came up as a place where a lot of places uh, you could live. Um, different coastal cities were mentioned, as I said, like San Juan del Sur, like Leon. So definitely Nicaragua, a uh, very affordable place to live. And uh, if you like like Central America, if you like the, uh, the ability to you know, have uh, colonial towns, have beaches, you know, have warm weather, definitely a good place to consider. Um, lots of suggestions in Mexico that probably deserve, honestly, their own video uh brazil somebody said outskirts of sao paulo what no uh sao paulo is the worst place to go in brazil if you're on a budget if you know brazil and brazil in general bad idea if you're on a budget now the north coast of brazil is significantly cheaper than the south and the sao paulo rio areas but even with the exchange rate going in our favor the last couple years, it's still not a great budget choice. Trust me on that. Brazil is not cheap. And, and again, just like Central America, the locals, a lot of them are struggling, which creates more insecurity, uh, especially uh, for us foreigners, unfortunately. I say Sao Paulo, a very expensive place to live. They said if you get outside of the city, you can get pretty cheap and amazing food. You can live very affordably. Uh, Florianopolis, a very common nomad destination, uh, called the Met. What? Man, you you just lost it. Now, Florianopolis, I've visited there. Have you actually been? I'd like to ask. That's a terrible choice if you're on a budget. It's not cheap. It's not cheap at all, right? Sure, if you go inland in Brazil or way north, you can get cheaper. But Florianopolis on the south coast, terrible idea if you're on a budget. Island, because of its charm and beauty. Someone says, conquers whomever steps foot on its soil. Some of these people should get it is some, nice. uh, some jobs, I'll give it right? that. It is nice, Tables but not from cheap. years ago tell tales of not witches cheap. and sorcerers, casting spells and curses on locals. Uh, definitely, I, I think a thousand dollars a month seems a little aggressive to me, but you have seen the Brazilian hay I, uh, drop dramatically uh, in the last year. And so definitely it, it... Brazil has gotten cheaper, don't get me wrong, since I visited several years ago um, because of the, the devaluation of their currency, but it's still expensive, man, compared to some other options that you have right now, 2022 in Latin America. Doesn't make the top three, let's put it that way being cheaper to live there if you have dollars, if you have euros. Uh, so Brazil, particularly in the south, places like Florianopolis, I think you could find a lot of other small towns. We could we could go on endlessly. So if you have experience with Brazil, leave a comment. What's your favorite place to live affordably in Brazil? Uh, there's probably dozens of them. North, baby. North. Uh, Dominican Republic came up as a country in general. Lots of places there. I think in most places you could live for a thousand bucks a month between cheap rent and eating out. You could definitely pull it off in most of the country. In Uruguay, Perry. What? Okay, come on, man. Dominican Republic, I've lived there myself uh, for almost a year in Santo Domingo, and it is the cheapest place in the Caribbean region. But let me tell you something about the Caribbean region. It's a freaking ripoff, okay? And all, most of the places in the Caribbean are super expensive, often even more than North America. Um, Dominican is cheaper than North America, but it's not cheap, man. People, again, are struggling. But these people, like Brazil, they're carrying guns. You know, it's legal to carry, and so pretty much everyone does in the Dominican. And it's just a different vibe. And how low are you willing to lower your living standards is the question. Sure, you can do it in the Dominican, uh, but it's... It would not be comfortable, let's put it that way. I mean, there's a big divide between the haves and the have-nots in the Dominican. And to live like a have, uh, you got to pay for it, right? That's the difference. And you can live like a have-not, but are we, you really going to want to live like a have-not? You have to ask yourself. 
So again, um, Dominican, bad choice if you're on a budget, man. Bad. The Caribbean in general, just forget about it. Just visit it. Don't live in the Caribbean. Uruguay, another terrible place, terrible to put on a list like this. Um, you know, Uruguay is not cheap. It's not cheap, man, for South American standards. Not cheap at all. Just, I mean, are you just listing places? Like, are you looking at a map here and just listing off uh, like a geography lesson or something? Uh, Uruguay is not cheap for South American standards. Trust me. Uh, small town atmosphere. Uh, someone suggested you could pull it off there. Uruguay, not the cheapest country by far in South America. Uh, but if you're wanting to familiarize yourself uh, with Uruguay, he says that's a good place to go. Stores and shops that eat everything you need for a day-to-day -day basis. Public and private hospitals. Uruguay, I've been there, is also the blandest South American country that I've been to. Just blah, blase, not much character. Um, he doesn't mention that. Medical clinics, you can pull it off for uh, a thousand bucks or less in a not so cheap country. Ecuador, country that is increasingly on my radar. Uh, I think you could live for a thousand bucks a month, probably in most places. You've seen Cuenca get high reviews for uh, a place to retire. Uh, you don't really hear Quito, the capital, talked about much, or even Guayaquil, one of the other larger cities uh, near the coast. But Manta, uh, gentleman says, important place to know if you want to familiarize yourself. Located on the central coast, it's the second largest port and the most popular beach location. You can easily live for a thousand bucks a month. Ecuador, where I currently live, we're finally get, getting somewhere, but you got to know where in Ecuador. Not everywhere in Ecuador is good on a budget. For example, the coast of Ecuador to find acceptable, keyword acceptable, uh, places to rent uh, for North Americans, it's good, you're gonna pay way more than say in the highlands of Ecuador, in the cities in the highlands, like Cuenca or Quito, or even in the Amazon region, where it's also much cheaper. So again, you kinda have to know where to go. Guayaquil is also pricier, uh, unless you wanna live in the boonies, which are not particularly safe, right? Uh, and you have to, lo again, lower your living standard. We're talking about comfortably uh, living under 1000 a month here. Some people like the coast of Ecuador. Some people don't. Some people say it's you know not that much to write home about. People talk about living in areas like Vilcabamba or Zumba or Loja in the country south. And so definitely you have lots of different um, you know, climates over there. Again, you know, the highlands of Ecuador, Loja, Cuenca. Quito, Otavalo, you're going to find uh, much reason, more reasonable prices uh, than you probably will on the coast. If you want to be in some place that's cooler than the, the hot beaches, I think any of those places could be pulled off for a thousand bucks a month without having to pay too close of attention. Also, Bolivia, Santa Cruz came up as the largest city in Bolivia. Uh, but still has a small town feel, he says, despite being the country's trade and transport hub. You'll find locals sitting in the street watching the world go by. Shops still closed for siesta each day and where a relaxed tropical atmosphere prevails. Someone also suggested Cochabamba. Now we're getting somewhere. Bolivia. Yes, it, it you know, spoiler, it did make my list. Uh, Santa Cruz specifically. Um, but again, it's super flat. Super hot, super humid. Um, I spent a few weeks there myself once visiting a friend. And uh, who would have thought some of the best women in South America, Santa Cruz, Bolivia. You'd, you'd never guess it. But, um, you know, in the middle of nowhere, literally. And you do feel that way when you're in Santa Cruz. Like you're literally in the middle of nowhere. But the, the divide between the haves and the have-nots is so great. Uh, in Bolivia, some of us might not like that. Um, it it, it kind of manifests itself in like the rich people are like super elitists. They think like they're better than everyone. And then the poor people are like, are really living in the dirt. So I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's, for some of us, it might not be that fun to live there, but it is super cheap. You could easily live there uh, comfortably for a thousand, under a thousand a month. Uh, one of Bolivia's boom cities, busy and buzzing with wide avenues, large choice of restaurants, bar life here is lively, driven by students and youth. A 
think most parts of Bolivia can easily pull off a uh, thousand bucks a month. Costa Rica gonna be tough in some areas on the beach. Come on, man. No way. Costa Fornia, I'd like to say. Costa Rica was colonized by Californians starting about 15 years ago or so, around 2006, 7 when I was living in California, everyone was talking about going to buy a place in Costa Rica. That was 15 years ago. Imagine what prices are now. It's just Californianized. Uh, no, just, it's not cheap. I mean, it's maybe cheaper than North America a little bit, but it's not cheap. And I've actually heard bad stories from other expats about uh, both the bureaucracy in Costa Rica and the insecurity, right? Uh, just uh, safety issues as well, caused by this, again, divide in social classes. So again, uh, Costa Rica, no way, no how should be on this list uh, or make, make anywhere close to the top three uh, when it comes to comfortably living under a thousand in Latin America. Suggests uh, that the country in general is good and that you can pull it off. I would say you're going to want to find certain beach communities. Um, I have not done Costa Rica. The beach is probably even more expensive than than the highlands in Costa Rica. Come on, man. That's where everyone's bought in already. A budget, if you have, leave a comment below. We'd like to. Costa Rica has been a draw mainly for like surfer types for the longest time from North America. Specifically, where in Costa Rica should you go? Uh, Peru, Arequipa. Uh, someone suggests it's a great place, great food. If you're in, if you're here in South America, you know you know that Peruvian food is one of those cuisines. It's like if you go anywhere in uh, the former Soviet Union, you've got Uzbek food, you've got Georgian food. That's what people want. And here in South America, it is Peruvian food. Ecuadorians don't want Peruvian food. I think Ecuador food kicks Peruvian food's ass any day of the week. Um, personally, but I mean, uh, small town Peru like Arequipa in the south, uh, yes, you could definitely live there for under a thousand a month, but the biggest true city in Peru, Lima, I would say no, I don't think you can do that. You can live there for a thousand a month. Um, so small town Peru, sure. Uh, but again, how low are you willing to lower your living standard? I mean, Peru is on a different level than Ecuador. Just cross the border by foot, which I have several times, and there's more potholes than road when you cross over to Peru. Uh, the rivers are surrounded are like by both on both sides by trash. Uh, <clears throat> the cars are so old you can smell the exhaust while you're sitting in them. Uh, it's just another level, man, of, of people struggling literally living in the dirt. I mean, and what that means is if you want a nicer upper class style living in Peru, you're going to pay for it, right? So I mean, uh, how low are you willing to lower your living standards is a question you should ask yourself. But yeah, uh, small town, Peru, sure. You could do for under a thousand. The history in Arequipa, uh, marvelous cordiality, he says the legendary white city where you can just feel the noble history in the air. Someone else suggested the Sacred Valley. Um, not so sure about that, but definitely Arequipa. I bet you could pull off in parts of Lima, a thousand bucks a month. I think it might be, no. might be harder in an area like Amiraflores to, to live well with that. So lots of places in Latin America. I'm sure there's lots we're missing, but though. Okay, that's about it. The only livable place that I think in, is in Lima is pretty much Miraflores on the on the beach, and you cannot comfortably live there for a thousand a month, 2022. No way. I've been there myself, not comfortably, and live in a decent place, right? Acceptable? Ah, uh, no. Um, there's the Barranco area just south of Miraflores. Might be a little bit cheaper, um, but you know, eh, not comfortable. Let's put it that way. So, thanks again. My But my top three, right, to conclude this for you, um, <clears throat> he just kind of listed a bunch of places like like a geography, ge geography lesson. And yeah, Latin America in general is cheaper than North America. But as for me, the top three, if you're on a budget but want to live comfortably in a nice place, be able to go out, have a social life, eat out often, 
um, and still come under the thousand bucks a month, uh, maybe even have a car. Top three for me. Here we go. Number three is in the Highlands region of Ecuador. We're talking Loja, Cuenca, Quito, Otavalo. That makes the list for me uh, as far as just reasonable prices, a decent place to live. Uh, can live for under a grand if you so choose. Um, number two on the list for me is actually Paraguay. Paraguay is actually a super cheap place to live. Um, very interesting place too. The street markets are so interesting um, to visit. But nobody ever goes or even talks about Paraguay, but that is an inexpensive place if you're on a budget. And it's actually pretty cool. Number one on the list he did mention, and that for me is Bolivia. If you're on a budget, Bolivia, uh, Santa Cruz is I, a more livable place, the number two city in the country compared to number one, La Paz. Uh, you're super high in La Paz, and La Paz is kind of built into this big hole, and the whole city is just a street market, right? I've heard they've been trying to get that, uh, usher that out, but um, Bolivia is super cheap. Uh, you could definitely live comfortably there for under a thousand bucks. That's number one on my list. Number two, Paraguay. Number three, the Highlands and Amazon region of Ecuador. I'm Mr. Second Passport. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button below. Take care.